So what exactly makes this hand wash worth $40? Well, let's make it and see. Hi guys and welcome to Hold The Leads. I'm Elise and today I'm going to try and recreate Aesop's $40 luxury hand soap. So to make this, we're going to need water, sodium lauryl sulfate, kokomi propyl hydroxysultane, PG hydrogenated castor oil, glycerin phenoxyethanol, mandarin orange peel oil, sodium chloride, cedarwood bark oil, lavender oil, orange oil, sodium dehyde something, rosemary oil, citric acid, limonene and linol. Okay. <laughs> So there's quite a lot in this ingredients list, so once I've got all of them gathered, we're going to try and make our first batch. For my first attempt, I'm using 55 grams of water, 20 grams sodium lauryl sulfate, 10 grams cocoa propyl betaine, 8 grams hydrogenated castor oil, 6 grams glycerin, 1 gram sodium chloride, and 1 gram phenoxyethanol preservative. This is more or less a simple hand soap recipe, but the first four ingredients probably makes up about 90% of this formula. So it's not as complicated as it would seem. Half of the ingredients are just essential oils that gives it that really nice fragrance. So we've got water for our first ingredient, no surprises there. This is the main surfactant or cleansing agent that they use in the recipe and it's sodium lauryl sulfate. I'm a little bit surprised because um, I, w I wouldn't really consider this luxury. It's definitely a um, common and kind of cheap surfactant. People tend to avoid using sodium lauryl sulfate. Some batches can be contaminated with a chemical. This is not all batches and obviously it's still safe because it's used in pretty much everything from face washes to body washes to obviously hand soap. It's not the same as sodium lauryl sulfate, which is the sulfate people are usually referring to when they say you don't want to use it because it's super harsh and it's a known skin irritant. So that's the good news, it's not that one. Kokomi Prodol Hydrodroxysultane. Now I couldn't find that, but I do have Kokomi Prodol Betaine. This is basically a secondary surfactant that you would use to kind of boost the foam and make it perform a little bit better. So I couldn't find the one that they have, but this one is more or less just the same job, so I'm not too worried about that. We've also got this hydrogenated castor oil. This is another surfactant, but it kind of has a sort of emollient feel, so it will probably make the hand soap feel kind of luxurious, which this definitely does. And then you've basically got a whole bunch of essential oils that gives it that lovely fragrance, so no problems there. Um, it's interesting because they have sodium chloride, which is basically just your average table salt. So not the good stuff, not like Himalayan pink salt, like really basic table salt. Um, that works as a thickening agent, which is actually great that you can thicken your hand soap just by using salt, but salt only works with certain surfactants. This is the preservative that they use. It also uses citric acid. Um, ignore this dubious looking bag. <laughs> this is a bag of citric acid that I have. I'm pretty sure that they're using that as a pH balancer. So yeah, as you can see, it seemed like a lot of ingredients, but actually when you break it down, um, the bulk of this is literally just water and different types of cleansers, and then everything else is just small amounts of like fragrance. So for our first attempt, we're going to stick as closely as possible to the ingredients list on the back, and then depending on how that goes, I'm gonna start tweaking it and adding in a couple other things. Of course, I don't have the formula or the amounts of each of the individual ingredients, so I'm just gonna be guessing to see what I think it might be. So if you're interested to see whether or not you can recreate a $40 hand wash at home, then keep watching. To create the base of our hand wash, we'll need to liquefy the hydrogenated castor oil by melting it together with the water, cocoa betaine and glycerin. Once it's melted, we're going to leave it to cool while we move on to creating the fragrance. The thing I'm most nervous about getting right is the fragrance because it has a beautiful scent. If you've never used Aesop soap before, it kind of smells like... Uh, it has like such a gorgeous smell, a very sort of woody and herbal base. And then you've got like the high notes of like the citrus. So it's a pretty complex fragrance. I can see why they've used about six or seven essential oils to get it. Um, I'm gonna have a crack at it, but I don't know how well this is gonna work out. Okay, so I'm completely winging it here, but mandarin is the predominant fragrance. So I'll use this as the base and go with about 30 drops mandarin, 10 drops cedarwood, eight drops orange, eight drops lavender, and eight drops rosemary. Once you've got your fragrance, we just need to mix it with the sodium lauryl sulfate that we measured earlier. I'm going to be honest, even at this stage, I have my doubts about this fragrance. It just doesn't smell that great, but I am following the same order that's listed in the ingredients, so we're just gonna keep going. And then to the water mixture, we'll add the preservative as well as our essential oil blend. 
Aesop's ingredients list also includes citric acid in order to adjust the pH. By using these pH strips, you can see that our hand wash is already between the pH of 6 and 7, so I'm just going to leave it as is and move on to thickening the mixture. So in theory, all we need to do to thicken our hand wash is to add the sodium chloride, aka table salt. But as you can see, it's not getting any thicker. Okay, let's add more salt. Mm-hmm, and it was right around this point when I realized we're gonna have some problems. Yeah, this is this is nothing like Aesop's. The predominant fragrance here is the cedarwood. It's just overpowered everything else. The other obvious thing is that this is just not thick enough. I think I'm probably gonna experiment with the salt a little bit more by itself before I add it to everything else, just to make sure that it is working. Okay, to see if this even works, let's do a quick salt experiment. I've got the plain sodium lauryl sulfate, to which I'm going to add in the salt and mix it together. So it does work, it thickens pretty much instantly too. Now I had my doubts, but I guess it's more about the ratio between the amount of salt and sulfate. Uh, but for our first attempt, I really don't think it turned out that badly, we're definitely on the right path. So action points for next time, I'm still going to use the same essential oil, but instead of trying to stick to the order that they're listed in, I'm just going to try and make it up as I go along. Second round, we're using all the same ingredients, but this time I'm doubling the sodium lauryl sulfate to 40%. As you can probably tell, I'm racking up quite a lot of ingredients here. So if you guys are interested to see the full breakdown on what each ingredient costs, along with where to buy them, all the behind scenes on reverse engineering Aesop's hand wash, then check out the full article at holalise.com. It'll have the final recipe of the DIY Aesop, as well as a bonus more natural version that I made. We're following the exact same process as last time, but I am switching up the order of essential oils, so hopefully we're going to get something a little bit closer to Aesop's signature fragrance, because that last effort just wasn't it. Once everything's combined, we're just going to add our sodium chloride and... <sighs> so, I would say that we're moving in the right direction. Um, it's got a better color, it's richer, it's more yellow. That's probably down to me incorporating more of the citrus essential oils like the orange and the mandarin. This is probably as close as I can get using the essential oils that I have. Um, but it's definitely in the same ballpark as the beautiful fragrance that you get with Aesop soap. It's just not 100% the same fragrance. So I can live with that. Um, what I can't live with is this horrible clumpy texture. Um, <laughs> at first all I did was use the salt but it was still very runny so I thought I would just add some gum to see what happened. And yeah, it's definitely thicker. <laughs> I don't think the gum and the salt are playing together very well. That would be my guess, but I'm t I don't I don't really know why it turned out this way. <laughs> so I'm going to give this one last shot using the ingredients that Aesop used, and hopefully I can get something pretty close. Round three. Well, actually, it's more like the fifth, but I'll spare you the details. This time round, I'm going to be adding the ingredients together in a different order. So, like before, I'm mixing the water, cocoa betaine, glycerin, and hydrogenated castor oil and melting those together. Once everything's melted, I'm going to thicken the hand wash first with the salt before adding in the rest of the ingredients. This is a salt water solution I made by dissolving sodium chloride with water. Not sure if adding liquid salt will make any difference, but I'm pretty desperate at this point, so we're just going to keep on adding salt until it thickens. Yay! It thickened! <laughs> um, I had to add in a lot of salt, um, way more salt than I was expecting, and considering the list it is on the ingredients, I don't think this has as much salt, which to me means that they probably used more sodium lauryl sulfate. Now, I didn't want to go above 40% just because anything beyond 40% of your mixture and it can cause skin irritation. I have sensitive skin and some of the people watching me have sensitive skin as well, so I don't want to use anything that could potentially be irritating to your skin. But yeah, so considering this is only 40% sodium lauryl sulfate and we've managed to get this amount of thickness, I think this is as good as it's gonna get. I've taken a slightly different approach and actually tried to get the texture right first before I add in the essential oils. I'm not entirely sure if that was affecting the mixture, but at this point, I was so desperate, I would pretty much try anything. I can't get over this, it, it's actually thickened. I'm so happy. <laughs> so first up is the preservative. 
And finally, the fragrance blend. This definitely is the closest I've been able to get. I'm really proud of this fragrance. Um, okay, it's a little anemic looking. I was hoping I would get like a richer yellow color. While it's a little runny now, I am hoping in the next couple of days that it is going to firm up somewhat and resemble that sort of runny honey texture that Aesop soap has. I actually think I'm going to move on to try and using some more natural surfactants rather than relying on sodium lauryl sulfate just because it's not my preference I'm pretty sure some of you guys would probably want a more natural alternative to that so this is our first attempt trying to make a sulfate free Aesop soap I'm starting with 53 grams of water 30 grams of decal glucoside 10 grams of cocoa betaine 6 grams of glycerin and 2 grams xanthan gum so instead of using sodium lauryl sulfate, which I know for some of you is probably going to be a no-go as an ingredient, I'm going to change to a more natural surfactant, which is decal glucoside. Decal glucoside is a much milder surfactant, it's gentler on your skin, and I think that fits a little bit more with something that's luxurious, that's not going to dry out your skin, and something that you'd actually feel pretty good using. Now because I won't be using sodium lauryl sulfate, it means that I won't be able to use salt to thicken it, but Seeing as I had issues trying to thicken it with salt anyway, I feel more comfortable using xanthan gum. I'm also going to see if I can skip the hydrogenated castor oil because I think that's an ingredient that not a lot of people have and eh, it'll be interesting to see if we can still get the same texture even without using it. To help the xanthan gum disperse evenly in our hand soap, it's best to mix it into a paste with glycerin. Now I'm skipping ahead a couple steps, but once you've assembled your hand soap, add the xanthan gum as a final step and whisk it until it's completely mixed in. It'll need about 30 minutes to set and for the xanthan gum to fully hydrate and start to thicken. So consistency wise, it's definitely different to the feeling of Aesop soap. This is definitely more of a gel. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because some people prefer thicker hand washes. So um, let's go with that. <laughs> I will say, however, that it doesn't quite feel as good on the skin as Aesop soap does. And I really think that's because I didn't include the hydrogenated castor oil. It's not a deal breaker, but I think because I'm trying to get as close to the consistency as Aesop as possible, I'm definitely going to include it. It gives it a really sort of moisturizing and oily texture that this just doesn't quite have. Other than that, I think I'm pretty much ready to make my final version. For those of you who are still with me, this is it. The result of several hours of trial and error, my final luxury hand soap recipe. So for the very last time, we'll need 225 grams of water, 150 grams of decal glucoside, 50 grams of cocoa betaine, 40 grams of hydrogenated castor oil, 30 grams of glycerin, and five grams xanthan gum. This recipe is for the full 500 gram quantity. Start by melting the water, cocoa betaine, hydrogenated castor oil in a heat proof container and while it cools, mix together the xanthan and glycerin. Prepare the new fragrance, 50 drops orange, 15 drops mandarin, 4 drops lavender, 3 drops rosewood, 2 drops rosemary and 1 drop cedarwood. Add the fragrance blend to the decal glucoside then pour it into the now cooled water mixture. To thicken, whisk the hand wash into the xanthan mixture and leave to set for 30 minutes. After that, you should have this beautifully thick, luscious hand wash. As your preservative of choice, I'm using Preservative Eco and check and adjust the pH if necessary. I've even made my own little label. Ta-da! <laughs> Looking at the three of these side by side, I actually think it was pretty successful. This one here is the DIY Aesop soap. I've tried to stick as closely to the ingredients as I could. In terms of the texture and fragrance, I think we're pretty close. I'm actually pretty proud of this. I think it's as close as I could get to Aesop soap. Now, whether or not you think it's worth $40, 
Um, I would leave that up to you, but it would definitely make a beautiful gift and I think anyone would appreciate it. I also tried to see if I could make my own soap using ingredients that I've used on my channel in the past. So if any of you guys want to make this, this would probably be an easier recipe without you having to go and buy a bunch of ingredients. It's not quite the same as ASOC, but it does resemble it. And I personally feel a little bit more comfortable with the ingredients that I've used here, especially considering the price tag. So for our first attempt making luxury hand soap, I don't actually think we've done too badly. I definitely feel like you can actually make something relatively close to what you could buy in the store at home. So when all's said and done, how much will it actually cost you to make your own luxury hand soap? Well, to make a 500 gram bottle, you'll need 122 pounds worth of sodium lauryl sulfate, 27 pence of cocoa mepropyl betaine, 96 pence of PEG40 hydrogenated castor oil, 16 pence glycerin, 17 pence preservative eco, 1 pound and 67 pence essential oils, and 2 pence of citric acid. The water and the salt are on the house. And that brings us to a grand total of five pounds and four pence, or around six dollars and sixty cents. Considerably more affordable than that forty dollar price tag. This video was so much fun to make and I'll be doing even more deep dive tutorials like this as well as exploring more interesting products in the future. So I'll be moving to fortnightly videos to accommodate more variety on my channel. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and I'll see you soon.